Welcome to Bioscience O'Clock's One Slideshow. Today we are talking about the COVID-19 tests. There are two types of testing, the viral test and the antibody test. The viral test indicates whether or not the patient had an infection by SARS-CoV-2 at the time the sample was taken, SARS-CoV-2 being the causative agent of COVID-19. This is the standard test used to diagnose patients. There are two types of antibody tests, rapid tests and laboratory tests. Both are used to identify if patients previously had a SARS-CoV-2 infection by whether they had already generated antibodies against it. The viral test is based on the RT-PCR technique. This refers to the real-time reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction. This test begins with an oropharyngeal or nasopharyngeal swab from the patient. RNA is then extracted from this sample. If there is a viral infection at the time the sample was taken, then viral RNA will be extracted along with the RNA from the sample. The extracted RNA serves as a template for the reverse transcription that produces complementary DNA. It is called reverse transcription because the transcription process generates DNA from RNA. Once the complementary DNA is synthesized, the polymerase chain reaction begins. The first step is the DNA denaturalization in which the double strands of DNA separate. In the reaction tube, there are primers, small DNA fragments that tell the polymerase the cDNA region that needs to be amplified. In the case of the SARS-CoV-2, the primers frame regions of the S or N proteins. Check out our previous video about the coronavirus for more information on its proteins. The link is in the description box below. If the primers find their target sequence, they bind the complementary DNA and the polymerase enzyme starts to elongate the DNA. This amplification cycle is repeated several times. And with each cycle, the amount of DNA doubles. The products of this reaction can be identified in a specific or nonspecific manner. Here we show the nonspecific manner using the cyber green detector, a dye that emits fluorescence when it binds to double stranded DNA. The emitted fluorescence is proportional to the amount of PCR products in the sample. This process takes place in a qPCR machine, which is a combination of a thermocycler and a fluorometer. The thermocycler quickly and efficiently regulates the temperature as each step in the polymerase chain reaction occurs under a different temperature. The fluorometer detects and measures the fluorescence by the cyber green or other types of detectors. In the graph, we can observe in real time how the fluorescence increases with each PCR cycle. The reaction includes a control to confirm the RNA extraction and its integrity. There is a positive control of transcribed RNA from the SARS-CoV-2 and a negative control that gives no signal. In this example, the presence of sigmoid curve indicates a positive result for the infection of SARS-CoV-2. The first antibody test we will explain is the lateral flow assay. A sample of serum, plasma, and sometimes blood is taken to look for antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. When a person is infected with the virus, the immune system generates antibodies against viral antigens. These tests look for either IgG or IgM or both IgG and IgM antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2. The majority of these tests focus on antibodies against the S and N proteins of the SARS-CoV-2. The test comes in a cassette similar to a pregnancy test. In this example, the cassette comes with a control test and two more tests to detect either IgM or IgG antibodies against SARS-CoV-2. The sample and a buffer solution are placed in the collection well. If present, the IgG and IgM antibodies against the coronavirus will enter the cassette. Inside the cassette, on a pad, there are recumbent SARS-CoV-2 antigens bound to colloidal gold. The colloidal gold is the color label that we see when the test gives a positive result. 
On the same pad, there are rabbit IgG antibodies that are also bound to colloidal gold. These antibodies are part of the control test. On a membrane next to this pad, there are antibodies that can recognize human IgG and IgM antibodies, as well as other antibodies that can recognize the control test antibody. The liquid sample flows laterally due to capillarity. If IgG and IgM antibodies against the SARS-CoV-2 are present in the sample, then they will form a complex with the antigen located on the pad. As we can see, the control test antibody is there. The human IgM antibody binds to the SARS-CoV-2 antigen, and the human IgG antibody binds to the SARS-CoV-2 antigen as well. As the lateral flow continues, the antigen-antibody complexes are recognized by the antibodies on the membrane. As we can see, the anti-rabbit IgG antibody recognizes the control test antibody bound to colloidal gold. The antigen-IgM antibody complex is recognized by the anti-human IgM antibody, and the antigen-IgG complex is recognized by the anti-human IgG antibody. The appearance of color on the corresponding test indicates the presence or absence of antibodies. In a negative result, there is no appearance of color on the IgG and IgM bands, yet it must appear in the control test indicator to confirm the test works adequately. If the control test indicator does not show the color, then the test becomes invalid and no results can be drawn from it. Here, we have examples of positive results for IgM or IgG antibodies or for both. The second antibody test is the ELISA, which means enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, and works in a similar way, but it takes more time and is done in a laboratory. A sample of serum or plasma is used for this test. The assay occurs in the well of a microplate. If we zoom into one of the wells, we see that the surface is coated with the recombinant SARS-CoV-2 antigen. If there are antibodies against this particular coronavirus antigen present in the sample, then an antigen-antibody complex is formed. After a period of incubation and a wash, a secondary antibody is added to the mix. This secondary antibody targets human IgG antibodies and is bound to a peroxidase enzyme. After another incubation period and another wash, the enzyme substrate is added to the mix. The enzyme substrate reaction takes place and after adding a stop solution, a color develops. If there are no antibodies against the antigen in the sample, no antigen antibody complexes can be formed so the secondary antibody has nothing to bind to, and after a wash, it is discarded together with the enzyme. Thus, after adding the substrate to the mix, no enzyme-substrate reaction will take place. The color intensity of the reaction is dictated by the content of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies, and the optical density can be measured. A readout greater than the cutoff value indicates the presence of SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. I hope you have learned more about COVID-19 testing. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. See you again at the next one slide show from Bioscience O'Clock.